Hello, this is Dawn Reeby from Excellence in Analytics, and this is our series on how to get a job in crime analysis. So that whether you want to be an intel analyst, a forensic analyst, a crime analyst, whatever it might be, we want to make sure that you are set up for success. So parts one and two of this series, Getting a Job as a Crime Analyst, talked about cover letters, resumes, and how to prep for these interviews. And today, we are going to talk all about what to actually do during and after the interview to get that job. So if you haven't already seen part one and part two of this series of getting your, your job in crime analysis, then go back. I'll put the links in the, in the um, comments below here. But go back and take a look because there's some really important information that you need to know if you want that job in crime analysis. Okay, so here we go. What happens when you get there? What happens? Let's, you've arrived early just in case you can't find it, right? You smell good. You look good. You know, you're, you're presentable. You're um, tailored. You know, you are put together well, right? That's the first piece. You've prepared, you've done all of that uh, prep that we talked about earlier. So you're ready to rock and roll. So what actually happens during the interview? Okay, so here's a couple of tips that are gonna keep you on track during and after that interview. So the first thing is, get super solid. And this is in the prep section, get super solid about your threes, right? Your three things, the three things that you can circle back around and talk about when you're asked any kind of question. So if they have a question about, you know, a records management system or data or that kind of thing, you know, maybe your one one of your three things is systems. So you can pull the conversation back. And here's how that could go, right? So again, the details of your threes are found in the previous um, the previous post, but we're going to talk about how to use them now in the interview. So now pretend you're in the interview and they ask you something that you're kind of wishy-washy about. You don't really know the true answer to. And you can simply say, I don't know, right? And, and, or, or, and you can go ahead and say, you know, bring them back to one of your threes. So let's say one of your threes is talking about, you know, creating buy-in, right? So you have lots to talk about when it's, when you're talking about creating buy-in. Well, if they say, you know, what do you think about getting off with, getting outside with the officers and that kind of thing? Well, that's kind of related to buy-in. So now you can bring the conversation back to the thing that you're most comfortable about and tell them what you would do relative to buy-in. So some of my threes are systems. I'm a huge systems person. So I operate in thinking about systems. And so if somebody asks me about a system that I'm really not sure of, you know, I want to be able to talk about the systems um, and how important, what an important role they play and how that would be one of the first things that I would tackle is to try to understand the system. But you've got to be comfortable about your three things because they're going to ask you questions that you don't know the answer to. And you've got to be able to respond in a way that gives you some authority as well as some vulnerability that you're going to go and learn those things, right? So that's number one, get solid on your threes, go back to the previous um, video here if, if you don't know what those threes are. Okay, number two, come prepped with questions. Now, it can be very, very easy, easy questions. It doesn't have to be rocket science questions. You can come with a couple in your back pocket. And here's some examples. You know, <clears throat> one of the things I like to ask is what's the relationship between the city managers, the, the mayor, the aldermen, those kind of folks, and the police department, right? So what's the relationship? The chief is, it's gonna be very clear on what the answer is to that. So you're asking the chief, what's that relationship look like? And the reason why it's important to you is because you wanna know, you know, what interests, what com conflicts, what, um, you know, how it's gonna work and how you're gonna work together with the city, right? And how the chief, what pressures the chief might have. So it's a great question to ask is what's your relationship with the city and, um, and how, or town and how does that play a role in crime analysis? Another question you might want to ask is what does success look like? Like if, if I'm here for six months, you know, I'm, I'm in Intel, what would success look like for you that you could turn back chief and say, or, you know, supervisor or whoever, and say, yeah, this was a great pick. Like this is what success looks like. Let them define it for you. Another question you might be able to ask is, you know, what's the agency's current understanding of um, how to properly use analytics, right? It's a great question. Or you might say, what do you think would be the fastest path 
to creating buy-in at this particular agency. So there are four great questions that you can use. Pause this, rewind it, go ahead and write those down. Those are great interview questions that you can ask. During your interview, you want to create um, an opportunity to provide value. Your job is to provide value wherever you go. Provide value. Whether or not you get the job, these are relationships that you're building and you're practicing building those relationships. So you wanna make sure that you're regularly providing value. And here's what that could look like during the interview. So let's say, you know, the chief says, well, I really want to implement ComStat, um, you know, and, and, and I've never done it before and I really want to implement it. You might say to yourself, like, maybe you're an analyst who you previously had ComStat that you did, or maybe you're part of our, our programs, our crime analysis school, and you have the templates available to you, the ComStat templates, or maybe you're listening to another video that I did and you have some template ideas, right? Some ComStat ideas. So you can say to the chief, well, you know, um, yes, having these meetings where we sit down and we all talk about solutions and challenges to the problems that we're having, um, whether they're continuous, whether they're new and so forth. And you could say, you know, um, whether or not I get this role, I think it's really important. ComSet is a really important thing. So one of the things I'm going to do for you when I leave here is I'm going to get you a resource that's going to help whoever you hire to really implement a proper ComSat, right? So, so let's think about that. What could that look like, right? So, you know, it could mean that a day later or that night, like you tell them when you're going to do it. You say, chief, is it all right? Okay, listen, is it all right if I get back to you within the next day or two with a video that I saw around ComStat or a template that we use that was really successful at this agency around ComStat or whatever it is that you have to provide value, right? Then when the interview is over, you do that. You provide the value and it can look like this. Dear Chief, <laughs> thank you so much for a great interview. I really appreciate you spending the time and energy with me. It was a pleasure getting to know you and the agency better. As promised, here is the link, the template, the whatever to ComStat that we talked about. Um, uh, I know that interviews are often very nerve wracking. Best of luck. I hope, you know, I hope to get, be connected with you again soon or something like that, right? So after the interview, you are providing value, whether or not you get the job, you're going to stand out. When you provide value, you are going to stand out because it's about giving. And when you are regularly giving and regularly sharing and regularly supporting other people, then that, that feeling is going to feel really good for them. Okay. So you're going to stand out. So that's one way to really tip tip the boat just a little bit, right, is to provide value and be sincere about the value that you provide, right? So maybe you've never done concept before. Maybe the chief is talking about leadership, right? And maybe that's your forte. Or maybe you're brand new to all of this and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. You can go to Dawn. Um, actually, no, don't go there. You can go to excellenceinanalytics.com and you click at the very, very top and in our... Um, you know, account, we have all kinds of free resources for law enforcement agencies to build analytical capacity. This YouTube page is a free resource. So we have lots of um, tabs in this, in this, we have a crime analysis tab, we have a leadership tab, we have a productivity tab. And when I say tab, I mean a collection of videos around that particular topic. So maybe you peruse the YouTube and you find something that's of a value to them and you bring it to them afterwards. And maybe you forgot to say that during the interview. It's okay to get into your car when you're all done the interview or on the train or whatever it might be and brain dump, brain dump everything that was talked about, right? Then you can go back to your house, really think about things. How did it go? How can I provide value? And maybe you recall or you wrote it down that they were really interested in productivity, right? Increasing productivity or efficiency stand uh, systems or whatever it might be. Google it, go find it, go to my website. I probably have it there, right? And so, um, you know, uh, in the... There, there's opportunity for you to provide value is really what I'm saying. Wherever you go, provide value. So during the interview, have your threes, your three things that you can talk about. Get comfortable with those main three topics, right? Ask 
relevant, important questions, have some tucked in your back pocket, right? And then after the interview, brain dump everything that you learned about that person, whether they have a dog, a cat, a kid, whatever it is, you know, think about the people who are sitting at the table and write down everything that you can remember in that moment about that person. Don't wait to do that because a week may go by, two weeks may go by, and you might forget all these things that you learned about so-and-so, right? But when you're doing that follow-up email, you might say, hey, and enjoy that trip to Arizona or whatever it might be to get that personal connection going. So relationships are really key, whether or not you get that job. All right. So this ends our three-part series on how to get that job in crime analysis. If this was helpful for you, please subscribe to our page and get lots of, of, of great videos on crime analysis, whether you're seasoned and somewhere in the middle or just beginning. Thank you. We'll see you next time.